Hello, welcome. Welcome to the Q&A on the film Between Fire and Water. Uh, it came from Colombia and is projected in the section uh, Doc uh, Horizonte in the 36th uh, edition of the Doc Fest in, in Munich. And uh, this film is premiere, is projected for the first time in Germany also, and has been selected for uh, Kino Kino Publicum Prize, the audience award organized by Bayerische Rundfunk and the channel Tri Sat. And uh, I'm Felipe Santos, I'm conducting this q and I'm the director of Instituto Cervantes. Uh, Instituto Cervantes is an institution devoted to the promotion of Spanish across the world uh, and the culture in Spanish. That is a, a language that we share with 21 countries uh, in the world. And uh, we share in this Q&A uh, with uh, our guest, uh, Viviana Gomez Echeverri, the director of the film, and also Sonia Barrera, the producer, and Anton Belzel, the co-director, and occasionally, for today, a translator uh, of some uh, topics that we can uh, speak in, in, in Spanish into, in this uh, Q&A. So thank you to everybody for having for being with us. And um, well, um, the first question is just to to talk about the career of Bibiana because uh, uh, you are from Cali, uh, and um, when do you decide to start uh, your career as a filmmaker? Uh, it was uh, just. Uh, uh, from the beginning, or it was um, a medium, a medium stop in other in other uh, careers. Uh, hi, everybody! I'm very happy uh, being here with you, sharing this space. And um, well, I was interested in film since I was a teenager. Uh, when I was in, uh, at school, I decided uh, that I wanted to do movies. I study social communication, but uh, always I had in mind that I wanted uh, to do films. And I started doing uh, photography, direction of photography. I studied in Spain for that. But then I realized that I wanted to tell my own stories. Uh, so I decided to, to write scripts and, and direct my, my scripts. And uh, in this moment, I have made um, two short films. And my first feature was uh, Kayla a narrative film, and I also co-directed the documentary Life is Secret, uh, a Danish documentary, and this is my third uh, feature uh, between fire and water. Okay, so how, how did your project come up? Uh, what, when, when do you light up the, the match? Uh, what, what, what was the, the first idea for starting this project? Well, around four years ago, I was working as camera woman in another documentary in the Cocha Lagoon. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of the characters that we interviewed was Taita Norberto, Camilo's father. And at the end of the interview, Camilo came and Norberto introduced him to me as his son. And I was like, how can this be? Because Camilo is black and Norberto is indigenous. I didn't understand, but, the, but then they explained me that Camilo was adopted as, uh, when he was a baby and uh, that he wanted to look for his origins and look for his biological mother. Then I decided that I, that I wanted to uh, accompany Camilo in this path. Also because I, at that time I was wondering uh, if I could start a family by adopting a baby. So I, I had a lot of questions and I, I felt that it was like a sign from life uh, that I could help this 
eh, young, young men, eh, but also try to understand more about adoption. So it was a, it was a casual uh, beginning. Uh, you you yes. find the story, or maybe the, the story finds you. Uh, that probably that was the case. No? Yeah, yeah, that's true. So put, uh, let's go to put some context uh, with the film, um, uh, just for uh, understand um, what's what's going on and what's the place in which the film is is taking place. And um, who are who are the Kiyasinga community? Who are the Kiyasinga people? And also, we are talking about also of another city that is Tumaco. Uh, let's uh, explain. Maybe Sonia, the producer, can uh, can uh, uh, tell us about the what, what's the difference uh, between these um, these um, uh, populations and these and these uh, peoples. Okay. Pues mira, la, la comunidad Quillacinga es una comunidad indígena que, que está ubicada al sur de Colombia, en, en Nariño, es el, el departamento. The Quillacinga people are an indigenous tribe located in the south of Colombia, in the Cocha Lagoon. In the Cocha Lagoon. Eh, ellos son una comunidad que en algún momento estuvieron por la violencia que, que hubo en esa zona del país estuvieron a punto de desaparecer. Um, due to the violence in this part of the country, they were close to being extinct at some point. Y, 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 y Tumaco, que es la otra ciudad donde se desarrolla la historia. Es, es, una, es una ciudad en la costa pacífica, también en el mismo departamento, pero hacia la costa pacífica, donde sus habitantes son en, en su mayoría afrodescendientes. And Tumaco is a city at the Pacific Coast, the same department of Nariño, um, and it's a town predominantly inhabited by afrodescendant uh, Colombians. Mientras que la yeah. comunidad Mientras que la comunidad indígena vive en las montañas, es una comunidad donde es clima frío. Eh, Tumaco es una ciudad eh, muy caliente en la costa eh, y son pues sí, sí, su cultura son muy distintas, sus, sus dinámicas son distintas. So this indigenous tribe, they live in the mountains, uh, uh, on the inside of the country, and it's cold. You know, it's, it's the climate is, is very different from the one in Tumaco. So also the culture of the two places is very distinct. So let's ambas están separadas. Okay. Ah, no, so, solo, eh, ambas están separadas casi que solo por cuatro horas de diferencia. Es, son yes, realmente... They are, yeah, they, they, so it says they're four hours apart, so it's really in space is not so much uh, uh, yeah, distance. So this film starts as a farewell. Um, the, um, Camilo is saying uh, a kind of goodbye to uh, his uh, grandmother. And um, probably it's the first mystery that is that, that you put in the table and uh, and um, how do you decide the, the structure of the film? Because it's a kind of a scroll that, that unrolls uh, along uh, an hour and a half. Uh, how do you decide the, the structure of the film just with this farewell of, of Camilo? Yeah, it's not really a farewell, you know? Mm. It's, yeah, yeah, it's a kind it's, of... <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, it sounds like it's... it's it's actually, it's Camilo's birthday, you know, and um, it's a place where as a family, they gather, as indigenous people, they gather and they always talk and they share their thoughts, you know, and it's a, it's a point of reflection also. And so his grandmother steps in and she really wishes well for him because she knows all his history and all the context, you know, and so it's, it's also for the for the viewer a good starting point. We felt, you know, to 
to see something is going on, you know, some, there's a problem, something, something is in the air, mm -hmm. it's about to happen and Camilo might need those, that good energy that she also mm -hmm. wishes upon her. And he's about to start um, searching of something and uh, probably th this is a kind of, of farewell as, as, as we told before. Um, how do you prepare the, the shooting? Uh, it was, it was uh, chronological or you uh, move the, the, the order of the shooting to, to get the, the film? I think, uh, I think finally the structure of the film is, the, is Camilo's journey. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and also we shoot in, in that manner because we were discovering everything with Camilo. We didn't know what will happen. No? So uh, we help him to, to enter in contact with family welfare. Then we discovered the news about uh, his biological mother. And then we try to contact other people. And at the end, uh, he, he wanted to go to, to this place, to Tumaco where the mother was from. So uh, we were with him in this path, like shooting okay. with him through his yeah. eyes. So go, going, going along with him, no, in the searching. Okay, um, tell us something about the light because you are also the director of photography of this film. And I found um, light very, very natural, uh, just even uh, you, you, not not uh, any any artificial, and uh, talk about uh, the, the the light you decide uh, for this film. How do you work it? Yes, we mainly uh, work with uh, natural light, uh, and uh, we try to to rebutar like to rebound yeah mm -hmm. about light and we just use light for the night but also the light of fire mm -hmm. i wanted that everything felt very natural and fire is always inside the homes of the kiyasinga people and also in the ceremonies at night so that that was like the the idea we, I, uh, we wanted that everything could uh, be felt as natural as possible and really to, to, to be there, like to create this realistic atmosphere with yeah. light. Uh -huh. Very, very documental. Uh -huh. So uh, let's, let's talk about uh, some, um, sometime about the topics that are present on the, in the film. There are some tensions, some contrast, and the first is identity. This is a searching for identity. And um, the question that is, who are Camilo? Uh, where does he come from? And uh, the thing here is, in Spanish, we have the same verb to say that. And uh, there is no that difference. And to say to be and to belong, we use the same verb. And this, this, this confusion, uh, um, it's reflected in this, in this film. If you if you uh, speak Spanish, you can feel that, no? Uh, yo soy, y, y, y de donde eres, no? Uh, where, where are you from? And, and wh uh, who are you, no? It's, it's just the same expression for the same um, uh, question. So, um, did you work with, with an idea of, of identity or you um, uh, had um, your own searching of what is identity for you in this film? Well, when I started to talk to Camilo, uh, for me it was very interesting that he was not only a regular person that is adopted, but he, he was Afro or black in an indigenous community. So it yeah. was very special. And, and he couldn't understand it very well. Also, he received bullying 
uh, when he was a child at school. Yeah. And uh, yeah. in at that time, he he maybe didn't feel very well and proud of being Afro, you know. Uh, so for me, from the beginning, it was like very clear that uh, this was a search for identity and that this was like the, the, the river, like a topic, like the river that was uh, yeah. fl uh, flooding, yeah. flooding. Flooding. Flooding all the time. Yeah, all the time, you know. Uh -huh. Like that was uh, below, uh, below the story, mm -hmm. you know. So that, that, it, that it means probably that identity uh, cannot be defined or can be defined. Probably that's, that's one of the questions that uh, pop up uh, with the film. What um, do you think? Yeah. I mean, identity is also a mathematical term, right? So it's, if it's identical, you know, and I think it, it means you know, that the, the view from outside, the expectations that people might have of a person and the inside, the desire, and the, you know, the, the feeling that they are identical in this case, they are so far apart, you know, because the, the community, you know, they, they expect something from him and him being the only black uh, man in the community and him being so lost, so there's a real, big discrepancy also in between this identity, you know, which is, which you can feel when you meet Camilo and he's, he's doing much better now in the search, but it was very eminent always, this, this, this discrepancy in his identity. Yeah, there's, there's a, a beautiful sequence in the, in the film uh, with Camilo uh, sailing in circles. In, in the lake, and it's a metaphor of this searching, no? It's a, a sailing in circles uh, just to non-stop, non no? Uh, that, that sequence, uh, Bibiana, was, was intended or it was casual? You, you found uh, Camilo sailing in, in, in that way or? No. It was a preparation. <laughs> No, the truth is that uh, we had always like very long talks with Camilo, and he 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 told me that he uh, when he felt alone or uh, lost or he didn't feel well, uh, he tried to go with the boat and uh, like very far away from the community and be alone and. Uh, hear music and sometimes he he did he did that this round uh, path or cycles so, you know circles so I found it very metaphor of the situation and very beautiful and then I wanted to recreate that but it wasn't my idea that that was mm -hmm. something that he uh, used to do. Mm -hmm. There is also a key point in the film that is the attack of aggressivity of uh, of uh, Camilo. That was uh, that was a normal uh, development of the story, or uh, you prepare um, that that uh, that moment. Could you repeat within the, 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 the attack of aggressivity of Camilo? Uh -huh. uh, that was that was intended, or it was it was part of the story, the part of the following. You were uh, you were you were making. No, uh, it was true. That is something that really happened. And uh, also, Camilo was in jail. Uh -huh. uh, everything was true. <laughs> uh, I, I I received uh, one one night. I received a call from Titan Alberto from Camilo's father that. Uh, telling me everything that was happening, you know, that Camilo became aggressive and that he was drunk and everything. And with Sonia and Anton, we decided to go there and to, to shoot and also to, to understand and to help the family because uh, it was very difficult moment. 
So when we, when, when we came to the territory, Camilo was in jail. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, it was, it was uh, very complicated to put the camera in those key moments of the life uh, of the community, of the life of Camilo, uh, because you put the camera between, between uh, dialogues, between the, brother, the brothers, and even in the, in the kind of meeting in which um, uh, Camilo is, um, is um, uh, yeah, judging, no? It's a, it's a, it's a judge that is um, uh, talking about the, the Camilo's behavior. So uh, it was very complicated to, to get the natural uh, rhythm, the natural pathos uh, in, in that. Uh, I mean, it took some time to really gain the trust of the family and also the, the community, which I think after Sonia can talk about that, but with the family, it was a, it was a really long process until they got comfortable in front of the camera. But because we were always the same small team, we had also a personal relationship with them and they opened up until in the end, we felt and we are sure that it was also a help for them. You know, it was, it was a, it was a place for them also to communicate. It was a platform as a family to process things. Like therapy. Or yeah, like it, yeah, it was like family therapy for them too, because yeah, in the case of the brother, you know, it's a real conversation that is happening, but it's, it's motivated also by the situation of, of making the movie, you know, but it's a real conversation by real desires of, of, of uh, especially his brother who said, I want to talk to him. I, I want to have a conversation, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Maybe and Sonia, can you, can you talk a little bit about the process of uh, gaining the trust of the community because yes. it was also difficult and important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sí, fue, um, eh, fue, fue, digamos que primero el acercamiento a la comunidad eh, fue con las autoridades, los taitas, eh, donde quisimos primero pues, pedir autorización para poder contar una historia dentro de su territorio. So, uh, first of all, they had to ask permission uh, from the authorities, you know, by the community, by the, by the taitas, as they are called. Mm -hmm. Eh, y una vez, eh, eh, pues ellos incluso nos, nos eh, dijeron que, que nos invitaron a, a la toma de ayahuasca porque a través de eso, esas, ese rito, pues podían también como leer nuestras intenciones al estar en su territorio. So, very, in the beginning, we were asked to join a ayahuasca ceremony, you know, because they wanted to see our intentions also in this this sacred ceremony, you know, they can consult the, the, the abuelos, the, the ancestors and see the spirits and, you know, uh, uh, consult if it's okay, you know, and see our intentions to that meeting. Okay, sadly the time is up and um, just uh, to say that uh, congratulations for the, for the film. It's uh, really, really a, a, a marvelous uh, film. And uh, just an, an, an last question for you, Bibiana, is um, what about your next projects? Are you working in something new or? Uh, yes, I'm working. If it, if it is uh, not a secret. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's not a secret. I'm working in a narrative series uh, in this moment. So I'm, I'm taking a break in the documentary and going back to narrative and Perfect. working with Sonia also because we are partners. Okay. So it's been a pleasure to have you, all of you, uh, with us. Um, thank you, Sonia. Thank you, Bibiana. Thank you, Anton, for your, only for your uh, very good translation. And, uh, and for those who, who are in the other side of, the, of this uh, screen, uh, thank you also for watching us. 
uh, do not miss, please, uh, any of uh, the films of this edition of the Dog Fest. Uh, you won't give up. And see you soon. Um, bis bald. <laughs>